In my last video, we went through the quick start guide for Google's new agent development kit, a new framework that Google released last week that helps you build agents using AI, LLMs, and so forth. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to deploy the agent that we created to the Google Cloud Platform. That way you can share the agent that you made with the rest of the world. The documentation mentions that you can deploy these agents. So this is an open source framework and you can deploy it to anywhere that you want to, but it was designed to work best with Google's platform. And they specifically now have three different ways that you can deploy it. Option number one, is using their, I don't actually know if this is new or not, but it's called Agent Engine, and it's a part of their Vertex AI platform. Option number two is using Cloud Run, which is a managed container service that they provide. And it looks like today they added a new platform or deployment option to the documentation called GKE, which is Google's managed Kubernetes service. The one that we're gonna be going through today and showing you how to do is Google Cloud Run. The reason that I've chosen Cloud Run as a deployment method to show you in this video is because I think it provides the best balance of affordability and power in terms of being able to deploy an agent. With that all having been said, let's go ahead and get started walking you through the project that I've created specifically for this and actually going ahead and deploying our project to the Google Cloud Platform. So the first thing that I've done, which is not in the documentation, is I've created a make file to make this a little bit easier because the command that the documentation has you run to deploy this is this entire thing right here, and it's a bit lengthy. The other thing is that if you wanna then delete your service so that it's not costing you money, this is the command that you run, and it's not as lengthy, but I will never be able to remember that. So I have make deploy and make delete as commands that I can run to make this a little bit easier for myself. And then because I've done that and I'm using environment variables, I need to include environment variables uh, in my make file at the top there so that they will be put into the commands that get run and you'll see that down in a second uh, below. The next thing is that we have a, a .env file. I have my real .env file over here, which is .env, and I have this .env.show just to show you what the what the uh, variables are going to be that you need without actually exposing any of my actual information. So just to go quickly through them, we're going to need a Google API key. This, if you watched my last video on the quick start, you've already done this because you went to the Google AI studio and you created an API key. The next is we're going to sp uh, specify our default model. Then we're going to set this to, I have it set to false and it seems to work just fine although in the docs they do set it to true. The next one is uh, agent path, and this is gonna be a relative path to the agent directory. Next, we're gonna name the service, we're gonna name the app, we're going to specify the project in Google Cloud, and we're gonna specify the region by way of a location variable. Next, we're going to have this requirements.txt, which in Python is how you specify the requirements for your project, similar to a package JSON file in Node. So the one that we need here is gonna be Google ADK. Uh, if they haven't fixed this already, somewhere in the docs, this actually comes up as an under, whoops, that's not right. This comes up as an underscore like that, and that will cause an error. So make sure that you change that to a dash if you are looking at the documentation and it's still incorrect. Now let's look at our Docker file. This I just got from the ADK documentation. So we are going to start with the Python 3.11 slim. We're gonna set our working directory to slash app. We're gonna copy over our requirements.txt and then install everything from those requirements. We're then going to add a user. You can see that it just says my user. So I didn't really edit this so much. We're then going to copy over the rest of our files from, from here where we are uh, in this file structure here uh, into our working directory of app. And then we'll specify the port and, we'll and we will edit our path accordingly. We'll expose that port and then we'll actually run the command to run our application. Let's take a look at the agent first before we go to main.py. So if we look in the agent.py, and this by the way is inside of a directory called first agent. So it's not on the same level as main.py, right? It's in a, in a subdirectory within our project. So we need to get the base directory. We're then going to load using .env to make sure that all of our environment variables are loaded in for our agent to use. 
So we'll use that base directory for that. Remember that you do need to go back a directory to get to the .env file. And then we'll go ahead and create our agent. And in this case, I just created a really, really simple agent. It's even simpler, I think, than the agent that we used in the quick start video last time around. And so basically, we're just giving it a name of root agent. We're telling it what model to use. Again, if we go back to ENV show, that's going to be Gemini 2.0 flash experimental. And then we're giving it a description. The description and the name, but less so the name, the description and the instructions are incredibly important for the LLM to understand what this agent is supposed to do. And also if we ever add sub agents or tools, which we'll do in later videos, it's really, really important to have really clear and concise descriptions and instructions. That way it knows when to hand off control to sub agents or to tools. So more on that in future videos, but make sure that when you do write whatever your instructions are and description are, uh, that you uh, that you make it as clear and concise as possible. And we're gonna actually see this in action when we go to deploy it. Now let's talk about uh, the actual main.py file. And we're gonna specify some things here. So uh, we have our, our app directory, we have our session database URL, we have allow origins, we have a serve web, web interface, which you wanna make sure this is set to true, otherwise you won't be able to go to an actual web page to use this, and I think we wanna do that for now. Um, this stuff we're not really gonna cover in this video, at least this session and the web interface. Well, we're gonna show the web interface, but the session we're, oh, the session we're not really gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna have mul uh, future videos on the session and, and saving data and stuff like that. So more to come on that shortly. In the documentation though, uh, this directory here, this agent directory was actually a hard-coded string and that's not correct. Oh, they did update it, okay. They did update it, so it's, that's good to see that they're they're introducing uh, updates to this and making corrections because this was like a hard coded string and it wasn't deploying and I didn't realize that and I thought it was weird that this wasn't being used but I wasn't able to get it to work. So this actually should be app directory here. It looks like again the documentation is now corrected, so it shouldn't really make a difference if you just copy and paste it. Uh, we pass in everything into this, and this right here is get fast API app. This is a special function that you can see is uh, exported from the Google ADK uh, package or framework. And this will return us, as you can see here, a fast API, which is a Python module for creating APIs. Uh, it will return us a fast API application. And what's interesting is that it's a fully functional API, right? And that's what we're going to be using. Or that's what our, our agent is going to use to serve itself. But what's also interesting is that because it is just a normal fast API application, you can actually extend it. So if you wanted to add other things onto this API, this API application, you totally could, and it would function just like a REST API would had you just used fast API yourself. And then what we'll do is we will actually run the program uh, so that it works and is served um, inside of our container. There are two ways that you can deploy to Cloud Run. The first is that you can use the ADK deploy command. So the ADK framework actually comes with its own wrappers that will make it easier for you to deploy, deploy to various services. And in this case, you could do ADK deploy cloud run and then pass in the appropriate options and it would deploy to cloud run. But I wanna show you again, if we look at this make file here, how to actually use the Google Cloud or G Cloud CLI application. It's called G Cloud. You might already have it installed. If you don't, you'll have to go and set it up locally on your computer. And this video isn't really about that, but I'll put down in the description below how to get started with the Google Cloud CLI uh, tool that allows you to manage all of your resources. The reason that I think that it's good to deploy with this is because if you go ahead and start using Google Cloud, you're gonna end up using this regardless because it's really the main way to interact with your Google Cloud services from your CLI. And even in uh, like CI, CD pipelines, you'll end up using this tool. So I think it makes a lot of sense to use it as opposed to using the ADK wrappers that are provided. So make sure that you have this entire thing put into your, uh, your make file or just copy and paste it somewhere. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and run make deploy. 
This is gonna take a few minutes, so I will check back in when this is done and we'll go and load it up and play around with it a little bit. Good news, it looks like everything deployed successfully. So let's go ahead, copy this link right here that it gives us. So service URL right there. And let's go and create a new Chrome tab and we'll load this up. Great. Looks like it loads a familiar UI to what we saw in the last video, which is basically just the standard ADK UI that allows us to interact with an agent. So let's go ahead and select our first agent. Now we can start interacting with it. So let's say, hey, how are you? And I'll zoom in here a little bit. Let's go even bigger. So I'm doing well, thanks for asking, how are you? I'm well. Now, how do we know that this is our agent though? Because like in theory, this could be just an LLM, right? Um, just some standard weird LLM. Well, not a weird LLM, but any LLM that I kind of plugged in here. So how do we know that this is ours? Well, let's say um, I'm well. Can you tell me what your instructions are? Let's see what it says. Let's read these. This kind of looks familiar. My instructions are to be a helpful virtual assistant. I can engage in general conversation, but only topics, only discuss topics that are considered safe for work. I don't have access to any tools yet, but I will soon. Also, I can delegate tasks to sub agents when needed. All right, so this is basically what the instructions are that we gave it when we created the agent. And so that's kind of how we can know beyond just the fact that we know that we're the ones who deployed the service. But that's like another way that we know that this is our agent, right? Like the instructions that, it, that we can ask it to, to give us as far as what it, its instructions are, are the same more or less as, uh, as the instructions that we know that we put into the actual code. And this is essentially like if we go here, this is gonna be the exact same UI that we had interacted with in the last video when we went through the quick start. So, uh, so that's pretty much, oh, you know what? Yeah, you are here. Look, system instructions. This is another way, right? That we know uh, that it that it's actually our agent, right? Uh, so pretty cool, I think. And it looks like this X button sort of didn't really work. It had to click, I had to click on it a few times, but, uh, but either way, so we have this deployed and that's great. So you can now interact with this. Uh, you can use it in any way that you need to. I know it doesn't do a lot because we didn't really give it any tools. We didn't give it any sub agents that it could use for delegating more complex tasks or any other tasks for that reason. So let's really quick look at how we can delete this because right now, if we keep running this service while Google Cloud does offer a free tier for a cloud run, it will eventually cost us money. So let's go ahead and delete this really quick. Remember that I have my own make commands here. So you'll wanna run this entire thing or use a make file and you can just do well, I'm gonna clear this out so it's easier to see, but I will do make, delete, just like that. I'll hit yes. And this is going to, this is going to go ahead and delete the service that we just, just deployed. Deleting is a lot faster than it is to deploy. We, we've successfully um, deployed our, our agent now and we were able to delete it. We were able to interact with it. In the next video, we're gonna take a look into other cool parts about the agent development kit. And we're gonna start making really, really interesting agents. And soon enough, I'm actually working on a platform right now to help with hosting these agents, uh, help with building these agents without code, help with working with MCP and stuff like that. More information to come with all that stuff in later videos at a later point in time when I'm kind of closer to being ready to actually release something, but the links will all be in the description when things become available. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care. See ya.